Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, we're going to talk about Molen, trading under the ticker symbol MULN. Molen has been a very exciting and interesting stock to trade, with a high volatility providing opportunities, as well as many ongoing projects that may fuel the speculations in the years or at least month to come. At the same time, Molen has been having a difficult time proving to the market that it is a serious company that investors can put their money into for the long term. In this video, we will go through the latest fundamentals and news, the price actions and my analysis, as well as my recommendation to hopefully help you make the best decision possible. As always, if you appreciate what I do, please consider to drop a like, subscribe to my channel, and check out the links in the description. Before we begin the video, I'd just like to state a brief disclaimer, which should clarify things. This is a video with my opinion and my interpretation on things and how they will be. They should not be considered as investment advice and should be watched for entertainment purpose only. They may be able to help you make more educated decisions, but shouldn't be used as the sole material for decision making process. Most of my analysis is done in the immediate past or just a few days before the uploading. And the price action may no longer reflect the price action that you see on chart by the time that you see my video, but it can still be used as a trend analysis tool. Also, the analysis covers the stock in a comprehensive manner, talking about more factors than just the news and the price actions. For example, we may cover the company's financials, the stock market trends, the long-term perspectives and the shareholder behaviors. They will affect the timing, the quantity and the actual decision regarding any stock. Since most of my viewers are watching the videos for the first time, it would be important for them to see these factors. So with all that being said, let's begin with today's video. Molen operates in EV manufacturing, distribution and marketing. It acts as a holding company for several brands and companies that they have purchased along the way. The latest example including Bollinger and Last Mile Service. The company first began operating around 2014 as a successor to a previous venture called Coda Automotive. Another previous venture is called Molen Motorcars, and it developed Molen GT, one of the world's earliest EV supercars, back in 2007. Overall, it's convincing to say that Molen has been a veteran in the field, and we can at least say that you know they have a track record to prove um, that they are sincere. The question is whether they have the means to stay in the game. The sector has been known to be highly capital intensive and it relies on industries that may not be fully mature on themselves. There are also long term challenges ahead, such as, you know, the valuation model, as well as the supply chain issues. Over the past few days, Molen has been through a rough patch in the stock market with its stock price sliding down to around 20 cents level which is down by almost 30% over the past five days and actually accelerating over time, given that the stock went down by 60% over the past four weeks. Simply put, things are not looking great at the moment. I believe that the main reason why Molen reacted in such a way is because it is now proposing to sell additional shares, in other words, to dilute its shareholders once again. Then, fear quickly grappled the retail traders who are the majority shareholders in this case. We have to remember that on paper, a lot of stars are aligned for Molen to score higher, but it doesn't mean that any of them would necessarily happen for real. This is why going forward, I would recommend to wait a bit for the stock to first stabilize before committing for additional capital. In terms of its long-term price action trends, despite some upward momentums and good news, such as the distribution rights, as well as, you know, the potential short squeeze. The company has been having a mostly bearish trend over the past five years, having traded between $5 to $10 for many years before peaking around $15 and falling back to the penny stock level right now. What this tells us is that Molen has been hard hit by the ongoing stock market downfall and that its own fundamental weaknesses don't help. This assessment has recently begun to change a little bit, but in my opinion, it hasn't reached a convincing point yet, and that it still kind of explains why Molen is a stock that I would recommend to trade instead of invest in. 
Regardless of the recent distribution contract or the short squeeze, the interest surrounding Molen is the expectation to sculpt a quick gain in a matter of weeks from the short squeeze, not really yielding dividends from the car sales in a few years, if we're lucky. With that being said, I also want to add that things can always change rapidly in a relatively young sector like EV vehicles. So the idea of investing in Molen shouldn't be completely ruled out should the situation and circumstances change. You gotta remember that as far back as, you know, or as recently as 2019, um, Tesla was a company that we're not sure if we want to keep supporting it. We also have to remember that as back as like 2017 or as recent as 2017, Neo was a company that's quickly losing its momentum. So a lot of things can change over time and we have to remember, uh, we have to like keep these factors in mind. So far, the online communities have been, you know, mostly skeptical about this company, about its capacity to survive beyond the short and medium term. If there is no more EV hype to fuel the stock price and to provide the capital that it needs. The general mood has since then transformed a little bit by, you know, what the CEO has been telling us. Sometimes certain articles are essentially high speaker of whatever the company announces with a pinch of blind optimism in the air. They may ask themselves, um, you know, if Molen is the next Tesla or if Mitri is the next Musk. To both of which, my answer tends to be, we shall see. And, you know, it's a very polite way to say, no, uh, I don't think so. First of all, he probably doesn't have the means. And second of all, his track record isn't as stellar as the one of Musk. Because we have to remember that before investing in Tesla, Elon Musk also invested in PayPal. So he has like a successful track record and he's well known. He has like an aura uh, to protect some of his business ventures, which by the way, I'm not sure how much of an aura he still has, but that's besides the point. Some have also expressed worries about the lack of transparency Molen has demonstrated in the past by not disclosing the identity of the commercial partners, as well as not saying much about their suppliers, including the company manufacturing their batteries, the same batteries that have, that have earned Molen their initial increase in interest and demand. Recently, the multiple announcements that the CEO gave the investors have rekindled some of the optimism, not just from a small group of fans, but also began to turn the public discourse a little bit. Basically, as far as online footprint is concerned, the biggest factor remains the price action. A lot of people are also considering about the short squeeze, but that really depends on what is the current price action. Like it, it more serves like as a as a reason to justify additional buys instead of the other way around. Like for example, currently with the price down, uh, we don't necessarily see a lot of people proclaiming uh, very loudly that, oh, you know what, don't worry, there's gonna be a short squeeze. Like, yeah, there are some people saying that, but I'm not sure that uh, the market overall is convinced. Momentum creates additional momentum in the market. And then from that, we might see like, uh, a push upward, but not until then. On top of that, the macroeconomic trends within the sector have been under pressure, to say the least, including the increase of the interest rates, the capital flights from, you know, growth stocks to other options, the conflicts around the world, the supply chain issues, and the expectation that there is a recession coming. Another factor to look at is how the flagship company of the sector, Tesla, has been doing. The EV sector is a relatively new industry that, and you know, like a lot of it is still in development. People very often like make the decision of whether they should buy EV shares based on if Tesla is doing well. The idea is to profit from a sector wide gravy train conducted by Tesla pulling the rest behind. We have seen on multiple occasions how you know, shares of companies like Neo, Lucid, or Molen follow a similar trend. 
with that being said, with the recent purchase of Twitter, um, I'm not 100% sure, one, how, if this logic would remain true, and two, how much steam does the, does the bandwagon still have? Okay, like, I'm, I'm far from convinced, and things remain to be seen, um, for me to, to believe it. Of course, Molan doesn't always follow the same trends as other companies, obviously. Um, and so far, it's not necessarily a good thing. Like, it's not always a good thing. Because whenever other stocks fall by like 10%, it may fall by 90%. Right? So this has also played in its favor. But we have to be mindful that this is a factor to, to watch out for. Because they might paint the surrounding environment in a specific direction. With that being said, let's also take a look at the company's financials, which may give us some hint of decisions that a company could take in the upcoming periods. The company's cash balance has decreased somewhat, but for now, it is not a major issue as the reserves remain at a decent level. The reason why cash balance is relevant to examine is because cash is used not only to finance the operations, but to satisfy short-term obligations. If Molin cannot meet those obligations, the company would be technically insolvent, with a possibility to be liquidated. To prop up the cash positions, companies have essentially three options. One, get positive cash flows from its own operations. Two, to take on more debt. Three, to dilute the shareholders. The liabilities of Molin should have provided some encouragement to those who want to invest in the company because it recently reduced its liability by almost $13 million, it didn't really have any significant positive effect. It was also in the same period of time when we saw the share price going from around $0.55 cents to below 30 This price movement shows that, although it is a good news, it didn't really carry much weight in front of purely stock-related factors. Despite the price action downturn, I still believe that it is encouraging to see, you know, the liabilities going down as it decreases solvency risks and reduces the amount of cash outflows by contract. The last element to look at would be the profitability of Molin. This is one of the biggest weaknesses of the company, in my opinion, and is also one of the main reasons why Molin has remained as a stock to be traded but not actually trusted with long-term investment money especially from institutional and shareholders. We're going to come to that. I know that some people will say, yeah, but you know what? Some, some investors have decided to, you know, up their, up their, uh, their investments. If we're talking about BlackRock, I mean, this should come to the very least with a small caveat, right? I'll, I'll come to that in a sec. The company hasn't generated income for more than a year. And despite its best efforts to control the general operating cost, the lack of operational revenue will eventually dig a hole in its finances, forcing Molin to either take on more debt to dilute the shareholders or to make additional efforts to increase the revenue, which we have mentioned previously. And to be honest, um, I'm not sure how increasing the revenue in a matter of month can be a thing. Taking on additional debt, you know, who really wants to lend to Molin with a balance sheet like theirs in an environment where investment, like where uh, interest rates can go up very quickly. So either way, like really the only option that they truly have is to further dilute. In my opinion, we should expect to see Molin choosing uh, the dilution route, probably. And this is because it's the least risky one for the company's perspective. This may cause further tumbling down to the share price, though, which is already happening, which truly doesn't help. So overall, the fundamentals suggests, or rather, the financials of Molin suggests that the company wants to say, stay afloat. It is willing and sometimes capable to control its costs, but we need to see whether the company can generate revenue in a year to come. And hopefully this is what we're going to see with the IGO distribution in Europe. So, the shareholders of Molin are mostly retail, despite the fact that recently, I think it was BlackRock, BlackRock increased its um, ownership in Molin. 
Yes, that is true. But I mean, BlockRock is one of the biggest, um, I, don't, I don't know how to say it, like ETF originator. You know, the one of the biggest investment um, firms in the world. So they have like a wildly diversified portfolio compared to whatever we can have, because they may have thousands of positions on their like overall balance sheet. So the fact that there are institutional shareholders and that their number might be increasing is certainly encouraging, but it's not enough to change my view that Molen at the moment is good for trading, not necessarily for long-term holding or investment. Now, another major catalyst of Molen is the significant size of the shorts. The reason why it is relevant is because short positions tell us about what a significant portion of the market thinks about Molen and also whether there will be potentials for a short squeeze. Currently, there, there's around like 42.5 million shares been shorted against Molen, the vast majority of them being traded outside of public exchanges, so outside of like our reach. The potential for short squeeze is therefore significant, again, on paper. The short squeeze is a phenomenon observed when traders decide to collectively buy up the price of a stock forcing those holding the short orders to redeem their positions. The reason why they may have to do this is because positions are borrowed from brokers and the shares are paid back at some point. So um, I, I, I want to say that in relation to, you know, stocks that can be short squeezed, it doesn't always matter whether the shares are, like, it doesn't really matter whether the companies have a good business model or if they're doing well. But I would argue that very often it doesn't really matter. Um, if we look at AMC, if we look at GameStop, if we look at if we look at um, Redbox, are we gonna say that these stocks have like an excellent track record that that they have like a very prosperous business, right? So overall, Molen remains a speculative stock to be kept at a marginal position in our portfolios. It may have a relevance to start putting in more cash if the stock price could be maintained for at least three to five trading days, if not more. Meanwhile, in addition to the potentials that the stock has, we should remember that the potential pitfalls are also present. So the proposal to sell additional shares might cause some additional tumbling once they're actually sold to the market. I would recommend to buy once the stock price holds up for at least three to five days and to gradually dollar average in instead of committing all at once. The maximum exposure I would recommend would be between 0.5 to 1% of the portfolio.